Language is a virus. Religion is just an operating system and prayers are just spam. This show gonna be good. Ah! This show gonna be good! I can't wait! Y'all! My wig has been snatched, okay? There has been so much promotion over this uh, new show on Stars called uh, American Gods. And I, originally I was into it because the marketing was great. Whoever was, is on that marketing team did a great job. You caught my eye with the posters alone. And then we started getting like little clips of the show. And then I found out that um, Orlando Jones is going to be on the show. And I, I loved his work for years. So I was already hyped about it. Then I found out it's a sister on there that eats white men with a coochie. I was like, you got a viewer in me. Okay. So I did a little bit of research on the show and what I found was that the show is based off of the book American Gods written by Neil Gaiman or Gaiman. Sorry, Neil. Uh, he's European. Hello. They always be writing those ethereal things. You know what I mean? They, they got a lock on that. Americans, we, we don't got a lock on fantasy. You know, them English people, they got a lock on fantasy. They got a lock on fantasy. Anyway, he is the guy that brought us uh, Cat Coraline, that creepy little um, stop animation is is that what it's that's what it's called right stop animation anyway i saw that movie years ago and it messed me up first of all i saw it with my little sister and i was just like i'm so glad that she went to sleep when we were watching it because i was just like this was not for children because i was freaked out all i saw was like animation and i'm thinking that's okay this is something good for us to bond on but thankfully she was tired from camp so she didn't even watch the whole thing i did i'm a freaking adult and i got the sheets up like this so scared but when I found out that he was a guy who created that who created American Gods I knew that it was going to be like oddly creepy which is what I liked um, about Coraline although I went in thinking it was for children okay from the promotion of like the posters and the clips that I saw online and then realizing that um, it's from the creator of Coraline and that he was really involved in the writing and the creating of this show as well. I love that. I love when the writer, like if it's based off of a book, I love when the the author of the novel or book is still in, um, is still in formation of the show, you know, and some type of, you know, has some type of creative role. I love that because it means that the book it's going to, we as the viewer is still going to get what the book entails. You know what I mean? Sometimes when it's based off the book and then the creator is not involved in the process of the show, you don't really get what you're supposed to get if you haven't read the book. You know what I mean? Sometimes I've seen shows and it's, it hasn't been that great and the fans are like, this is terrible. You should have stuck with the book. So um, I'm glad I just broke a nail. I'm so freaking hyped about this show. I broke a damn nail. Nail, you owe me a manicure. Anyway, um, I was just excited about that and um, I, I decided to check it out and boy, did I make a great decision because the show was so good. And so I've watched it like three times now because I, I watched it when it first came on then I watched it again like right after the premiere and then I watched it again the following day because it's just so good and you find so many different things. So this review is coming from me having watched it three times and um, I did a little Twitter stalking of certain people in the production. So I found out uh, a couple of things that I didn't know when I first watched it. And I found out that information and watched it again. And I loved everything about it. Uh, it's so good. And this is from episode one. Please don't disappoint me like The Walking Dead. I st I'm still a big fan of The Walking Dead. But I... Um, I, I am someone who became a fan of the show because I read the, uh, the graphic novels first. Or the... Com I think it's called graphic novels? The comic books. I read the Walking Dead comic books first and I love, love, still do love the comic books. But when I found out that the show was going to be on TNT, I was concerned because The Walking Dead is extremely gory. Like they go there and, or no, on AMC. And I just didn't think that a basic cable network would, um, I, I just didn't think a cable, a, a cable channel that isn't premium would really go there. Like they just started to allow them to curse this season. So and, and you know, it's it's watered down because it has to be watered down for AMC. Still really, still a really good show, but I read the comic books and I expected the same amount of drama and gore and suspense. And I just don't get that from um, The Walking Dead. Although the creator of The Walking Dead is still pretty much involved in it. It's just, you know, they had to turn, they had to tone it down for um, a basic cable network. Understandable, but if you watch The Walking Dead, you really need to read the books like your mind is going to be blown away the comic books are ph 
nah, man, no. Anyway, let me get into American Gods. Also, before we get into it, I'm not going to do a lot of research about the show because I haven't read the books and I want, I want to be surprised from what I have found out from people who have read the books is that this show is very, who have read the book, I think it's just one book, that this show is very much the same as the novel. Like you're getting what was written with um, a few characters, minor characters, fleshed out a bit more, which is great. So um, I'm not going to do a lot of research because I just want to be surprised and um, I feel like doing too much research as somebody who doesn't know about this source material would really, um, I don't know, ruin, ruin the surprises for me as a viewer. So I'm going to review it as I watch it. If you do have any additional information, please write it down in the comic section. But um, that's about all that I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more. I'm just going to watch it and maybe find a few things, maybe watch some things from um, any additional clips that Stars has or any re any information that they'll release, I'll look into it, but that's about all I'm going to do because I want to enjoy the ride of American Gods. One opens up with thought. <laughs> I think it's thought, but I'm going to go with thought because why not? He is one of the gods. I think he is, I think he's the god of knowledge. I could be wrong and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to figure it out as I watch the show. Anyway, he's writing about these Vikings who are like stranded on this island and they are trying to um, find their God, their God of war. They're trying to get him to give, um, they're trying to reach out to him so that he could save them and give them direction. What I wanna say about this is when I knew this show had me was when the Vikings got to wherever this land was, I guess it's America. That's what it's supposed to be, right? Let me know in the comment section. I'm telling you, I'm not doing any more research. Anyway, they get to this land and as soon as they step foot on land, the first Viking is like lit up with arrows, like pop, pop, pop. His entire body is covered in arrows within seconds. He turns around, his body full of arrows. He looks at the other Vikings and he just falls down to the ground. And I was just like, this is my kind of show. Yes. So anyway, their God that they're trying to reach, they can't get him. So they start doing crazy things. They start stabbing themselves in the eye. Uh, then they start sacrificing other Vikings, trying to get his attention. Um, if you're, you know, religious at all, especially if you've read the Bible, you know that uh, a lot of people did this uh, to get God's attention back in the day before the sacrifice of Jesus. Christianity is, oh, gory. Um, <laughs> I'm Christian, so. Anyway, um, so they were doing all these things so I get his attention. None of it worked. So then they decided that because they're trying to get the God, summon the God of war, they should have a war with each other. And then there's this phenomenal war scene where they are just like, you know, just stabbing each other and like blood is just flying everywhere. Limbs are flying. People are getting like ripped in two with an ax. Then like one guy, his arm is chopped off <laughs> while he still has a sword in his hand. And while his sword, his dead arm is like flying through the sky with his sword, it stabs another Viking <laughs> through the throat. <laughs> Like, who thinks of this meal? You are crazy. But it was so, 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 so good. Like, this is what I really liked about this show from just the first episode. The way it's shot, um, the actors that are that are in it, like everything is just superb. Really, really phenomenal. And I think when you really put time, effort, and good money into a, a project and you want to do a quality project, I really think that you need to get the praise. That's why I'm so excited because. This doesn't happen a lot anymore. Like there are just, and maybe because I review a lot of reality TV shows, I'm just uh, used to like, uh, you know, bad budgets. You know what I mean? I feel like this this show had a really good budget because they had they have a phenomenal cast. The writing is really good. The characters are really flushed out. Ah, I'm in love. Then we're introduced to the main character of the show, and we'll we'll basically be following him throughout the show. His name is a Shadow Moon, and he's played by Ricky Whittle. I don't um, really know of him. I haven't seen him in anything. Like he was, this was the first time I've ever seen him in anything. However, I do know that he got this part because a lot of fans who knew that the book was going to be made into a show was really like rooting for him to play this character because um, I saw this little interview that, um, not little, let me stop. Uh, this huge interview that Stars did with Neil, uh, I won't say his last name because I feel like I'm butchering it, but uh, with Neil and he said that, um, the character of Shadow Moon in the novel and how he wrote him, he said that he is supposed to be ambiguous because Ricky is like uh, a billion times racial. Like he's very like uh, mixed up. You don't really know what his culture is, but you know, because I'm of, you know, color, 
you know, I'm, I'm of the tribe that I think he's from, I could pinpoint my peoples. And I realized that we're in there somewhere. And that's what Neil was going for. He wanted somebody who would be very, um, who, was, who would be very ambiguous because he said that this character represents like new America. Basically what Americans will look like in 2050. Um, scientifically speaking, that is that is the prediction. So that's why he wanted that character because basically Ricky represents America. Um, well, Shadow, um, I will say this about Ricky. He is fine. That man is beautiful. And I don't know if the... Um, if the director, I need to look into it, if the director or the camera guy or uh, the lighting guy, if they're black or they're people of, or they have dark skin, but I will say this, you guys lit a person of color extremely well in this show. And that is very difficult for um, non, you know, melanated people to do as, as I have found as somebody who was dark skinned in Hollywood that it's very hard for them to like light us properly. And when you get a good lighting guy, you stick with that dude. So whoever the lighting guy, lighting girl is who does your um, lighting, Ricky, stick with that person because they light you beautifully. You look so great in your scenes, like his skin, oh, ciao. His skin is like glistening in the seas. There's especially one scene when he's in a park and he's like standing on a mountain and that beautiful like caramel frappuccino ebony mixed skin is just oh oh and it's so beautiful. He looks so great and I was just very very excited because I'm just like I know Orlando Jones is going to be lit amazingly. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that character. Anyway, we meet Shadow Moon and he's in jail for assault. And while he's in jail, his wife dies. He finds that out a few days before he uh, is about to get released. They release him early because his wife dies. While he's um, trying to get home, he gets on a plane and he meets uh, Mr. Wednesday, who is, no, I'm not gonna give it away yet. He meets Mr. Wednesday who propositions him for a job and asks him to work for him. And Shadow Moon is like, nah, you know, I'm a thug. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of that lifestyle. I'm not going to do it. And so they part ways. Mr. Wednesday is played by Ian McShane, who is just like amazing. Like everything he does is just, uh, it's just top notch. He just brings such quality, quality to the art of acting. He's so good in everything that he does. I love to just hear him just speak words because he's, oh, every word, he takes time with it. And there's always an intention between every word, even a preposition. Like he's such a, such a good actor. And I honestly think that he is the voice of the NIV um, Bible. If you've ever listened to the um, New International Version of the Bible on, um, <laughs> this is how long I've listened, how long ago I've listened to the Bible, I was about to say on CD. On CD or MP3, I think it's Ian McShane. I, I, I feel like I've heard him like voice the book of Job. Like I really do. I could be wrong, but I feel like it. Anyway, I was just really excited to see him in this show because he's just a phenomenal actor. Even his scenes, like he has a lot of um, character changes throughout just a few scenes that he's in uh, with the meaning of Shadow Moon and just their, re how their relationship progresses just in the few scenes that they have. And you could see like his character just change up and ah, oh, so good. Goals, goals. Then we meet Belkis, 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 whatever. It's the sister of the show, girl. Belkis is also known as Queen of Sheba. Like that's the um who Belkis, this like a sex god or whoever is based oh. off of Queen of Sheba, um, Solomon's other woman. Um, okay, read the Bible. She left with a baby. Don't want to tell you that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> she has the best scene of the entire episode. Girl, she's at the bar with this unassuming white man and she talks him up and she takes him back to her room. While they're in there, you know, about to have sex or whatever, it was really weird to me because I was just like, I heard about this scene. I was like, how are they going to do this? Well, girl, they did it. They did it. So they're having sex and, then, you know, they were naked. <laughs> Like, I just did not expect to see, because I've seen this, um, the, uh, I, for, forgive me, sir, I don't know your name, but the older white gentleman, I've seen him and stuff, and, um, and a lot of comedic stuff. I was not ready, uh, <laughs> to see him naked. I was like, oh, hello, it 
anyway, they're like, you know, in it, they're getting aroused or whatever. And, you know, they're doing the whole foreplay or whatever. Then, you know, it gets to the time when the insertion happens. And he's like getting his life. Like he is just having the time of his life in Belkis's womb. And, you know, he is just mesmerized. He's like, oh, it feels so good or whatever. So then she hops on top and she just says, I want you to worship me. Ah! She said, like, I want you to worship me. He's like, what are you talking about? But he like, at first he wasn't, <laughs> I have to say it. At first he wasn't trying to do it because it was like weird to him. But the coochie was so good. He would just start worshiping. And she's like riding him to Hades. And she's just like, oh, come on, worship me. He's like, no, Keith, you want my son, my light, and my moon. I worship you. Like just saying all of this like crazy stuff to like worship me. You are amazing. You feel so good. And while he's like worshiping her, she's like getting her life. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> her coochie just starts devouring him. Like he's just, as he praises her and as I guess he um, orgasms. <laughs> He goes deeper and deeper into the vagina. And I'm like, oh my God. She's just riding this fool till he's nowhere to be found. And then she just lays down naked and looks in the mirror. And I think that um, every time <laughs> um, she devours a man with her vagina, she gets like younger. Because she looked a lot different when she looked in the mirror. And I think maybe we'll find that out later on. But I remember in the bar scene, she looked a little, you know, worn. But then after she had her um <laughs> her feeling of white man, she looked a lot younger. So maybe that's like how she keeps her youth by devouring um, men with her coochie. Can she just devour white men with her coochie? Because listen, it is 2017. We got a lot going on. I feel like we need this, especially black women. I feel like we need to have scenes where this sister is being worshipped by a white guy and she is devouring his soul with her vagina. We need this. We need this, okay? I feel like it has to happen. And you know what? Not just white guys. I want it to be like, you know, yeah, like keep the Trump kind of guys, like just devouring them alabaster demons. But I also want, um... I also want Belkis to devour Hoteps. Can she devour them with her vagina as well? Hoteps and them ashy Negroes on Twitter. I need her to do this. Do this for the culture. Do it for black women. We need to have this. If it doesn't happen in season one, season two, she has to devour Hoteps. She has to. She has to devour them. Oh, you know what? Let her have a scene where this, like with a black guy. And he's just like, oh man, I'm not normally into dark skinned chicks. And I just want her coochie to go ham on him. Just eat him alive. Ah, oh. Neil, we needed this. Thank you so much for Belkis. <laughs> uh, Belkis is played by Yatidi, uh, no, Yatidi Badaki. Uh, forgive me if I'm butchering your name. I tried to find um, somebody saying her name online and um, <laughs> I got it. I heard it from an interview, but I, the way he said it, I felt like it was wrong. But um, she is a fabulous actress and she did a great scene. Um, you know, because honestly, actress to actress, it's very hard to do like nudity and just be, because, you know, our bodies are uh, precious, you know what I mean? And not everybody is that so open with nudity. And I, I know it was probably, it, it, it probably was a close set, but I know there were men that it's just, it's just very difficult to just be intimate like that in a room full of people and to like be bare balls naked. Cause she was naked. She was naked down to the vagina. Like she was butt ball naked. And um, she pulled it off beautifully. So great job. Great job. Have her devour a whole tap this season. Please. For the culture. Oh, man. A dark skinned black woman devoured a white man. Her coochie ate him and sent him to the sunken place. Wig snatched. Shout out to the um, whoever like did the music for this um, episode as well. It was really, really good. A lot of the music really um, transitioned well. And I felt like all of the music fit each scene that it was in. And I feel like each character had their own theme song. Because like you could feel, you could feel the essence of each character with 
the songs that were chosen. So it, this is a really stellar show. Then we guys. meet one of my another favorite character. I, I love every character, but I really really like this character, Leprechaun, uh, aka Mad Sweeney. He's played by Pablo Schreiber, who I'm really happy for this dude because I I follow his work for some time. And I've also seen him like kill it on SVU and I heard that he does a very great job on um, Orange is the New Black. So I'm really excited for him and I hope that this show, this character, really like catapults his career because I think he's doing well but I feel like this show will give him the star power that uh, his talent deserves because he's a really, really good actor. So um, I was really happy to see him. I think he played this character really well, uh, uh, Mad, Mad Sweeney. Just a fun, brutish kind of, you know, Irish pub kind of guy and it was it was a fun character he has this scene uh, with Shadow Moon such a good scene with him and just like coins like it was just such a good scene he has like this uh scene with him and he has some like weird beef with Shadow Moon that I think we'll probably get into later in the season he brings up Mr. Wednesday like he's there with Mr. Wednesday for some reason but Mr. Wednesday doesn't acknowledge him so I don't know what's happening there but he has like this weird thing with Shadow Moon and um he's trying to like show him he's good at what he does so he like does this whole thing with like coins then he like challenges him to a fight and they have like this really cool fight scene and I'm, I'm interested to see what is the beef that uh Mad Sweeney has with Shadow Moon and I feel like it's probably maybe uh the favor of Mr. Wednesday who we later find out is actually Odin the god of war that the Vikings were trying to get the attention of girl you watch this there was a scene where the Vikings were carving this statue and if you look at it closely that statue remembers uh resembles Mr. So Wednesday I'm interested to see if that is his beef with Shadow Moon because he had like this such an issue with Shadow Moon where he was like trying to show him that he was um above him with the coin tricks it, it was this whole coin scene and I um I I read an interview with Pablo and he was just like I came into this character because the guy who was tapped to play it um got taken out of it for some reason and he was just like my first day like he really didn't have any time to sit with the character or the accent and he was just like my first day was the fight in the coin scene and the coin scene is so intense because he's like flipping these coins because a shadow moon is like a coin trick kind of a guy and um matt matt sweeney wants to show him that he he's like you do coin tricks well i do coin tricks too and he's just popping coins out of anywhere to the point where shadow moon was like enough i get it you know what i mean like how did you do that and then they get into uh, the fight i previously talked about but i'm interested to see what is the beef and why shadow moon is tricked into working for mr wednesday who was the god owner and the god of war and i guess he's like a god of other things i looked it up but it was just so much information. I was just like, nope, I don't want to spoil it for myself. But he's the god of war. Shadow Moon makes a deal with Mr. Wednesday that he can go to the funeral of his wife first before he decides to work with him because he was like tricked into working with him through like some coin trick or whatever. Anyway, while at his wife's funeral, <laughs> Shadow Moon finds out that his wife died in a car accident because she was giving Shadow Moon's best friend a blowjob and I guess the girl was doing such a good job that the guy lost control of the car and they um and got into like some type of accident the accident was so bad that her her mouth was fit like his penis was severed uh from his body and it was found in his mouth and the and how he finds this out is because his wife's best friend who was also the husband of the guy that his wife, Shadow Moon's wife, was cheating with, was just like, the coroner asked me, what should I do with his penis? And I told him to put it in a place that he found it. And then she was just like, but I wouldn't do that to you, Shadow Moon. And she has a really good scene. I don't know if she's going to be throughout the um, the season, but I think the wife did a really good job. She was dealing with a lot of trauma, and um, even uh, later, when Shadow Moon is at uh, his wife's grave, at, his bur at the burial site, he he's going through like all these emotions with her and he's just like why didn't you just like why would you do this to me like he has like this whole like really good uh monologue scene uh just spewing all the rage that he has at his now dead wife grieving wife comes up and she tries to have sex with shadow moon and she says that she wants to fill her mouth up with his ejaculation and spit it on her husband's grave because he cheated on her they just have a really really powerful scene another thing i found out from uh the interview with neil is that the writers of 
American gods wanted Shadow Moon to actually receive fellatio from the grieving wife. And Neil was just like, if you do it, I'm not going to be a part of the show. And he, I think he actually said that he was going to kill himself. And he was just be like, because that's not who Shadow Moon is. And I know it's going to be salacious and I know it's going to be good for the show or ratings or whatever. But that's not the character that I wrote and that's not who he is. He would never accept, um, he would never do that. He would never do that to his wife and he would never do that to his best friend. Even, even if he's going through his own anger and um, his own betrayal, he's not that kind of guy who would give it back. And I really liked how he stood his ground. That's why I was saying what I liked about this show is that the the author, the creator, is still involved in it. So you know it's going to be, um, we're going to get great context from this show. Later in the evening, Shadow Moon is leaving the burial site. And while he's walking, he's kidnapped by Technical Boy, who is a new god. He is the god of technology. What I found out in my research, um, and especially the inter interview from Neil, is that gods are born whenever something is being worshipped. So he's a baby god. And basically, um, he was born out of the iPhone and computer and laptop era and all of that and so because we Americans worship technology technical boy was born he kidnapped Shadow Moon because he wants to know what's going on he is very concerned because he doesn't understand why Mr. Wednesday has taken an interest in him and he wants to know but Shadow Moon is like I have no idea and I think what we're going to get this season is we're going to get old and new which is such a good theme and we're probably going to get like younger gods going against the older gods and we're probably going to get like this whole like American God War one thing I really um, hope is fleshed out this season because I haven't read the novel and I really don't understand why. Why did Odin, Mr. Wednesday, come to America? Because the Vikings um, came to America to look for him. They were searching for him. They couldn't find him. So they came to this uh, land, which is America, to find their god of war. And I, I wonder why he came here. I hope we figure that out throughout the season. Shadow Moon honestly says that he has no idea why Mr. Wednesday is into him, like why he's taking this interest. He doesn't know what he wants. He doesn't even at this point know that know that he's dealing with a guy. Technical Boy doesn't believe him and he decides to kill him. So he sends his goons, which are like these not fully formed computer generated human beings who are like stumping and trying to kill Shadow Moon and then they later try try to hang him and while he's being hung the rope is severed you know what and I I if anybody has read the book and understands what that means the noose means it it did something to me but it didn't it, it didn't um it didn't turn me off from the show because I feel like there's a reason behind it because Shadow Moon was having visions of a noose while he was in jail and seeing a brown person, somebody who I perceived as a black, as a black man being hung from a tree, that did something to me, right? But I feel like it was intentional. So if you've read the novel, um, give me the tea, but don't give me all the tea to give it away. But I, I want, I want to know why Neil did that because he said that American Gods is about America. Um, and so he was saying that he wrote this because when he was, when he came here fresh from England, he was like in this small town and he just realized what he thought for, about America from being in England with none of uh, the truth. Like he came here and he realized this place was like really, really different than what they get funneled in um, to England. So I really want to know like what that meant. Did that have anything to do with American lynchings of black men? I don't know, but that was, ah, I, that, that was, um, that scene was very, um, it was emotional. And that's good, you know what I mean? It's a show, but it was just like, wow, I whew, did something to me. Anyway, his noose is severed, he falls to the ground, and while he's falling to the ground, regaining uh, his breath, he sees like those goons or whoever, those technical boy goons, being just like severed, just chopped up and ripped into two, and it ends there. We don't know who um, is killing these, you know, computer generated goons. We have no idea what's happening, but it's just, it was just a beautifully shot scene. And that's where it ends. And I am so geeked for next week. I have no idea what this show is. I really have a vague idea of what it's about, but I'm just really interested. The casting is really 
um, is very interesting to me because I like a lot of people. Kristen Chenoweth is in it, one of my favorites. Orlando Jones, one of my favorites. Ian McShane. I'm really happy for Pablo Schrei uh, Schreiber because I think that he's such a great actor and I hope that this show gives him the star power. Belquis is the um, American god that every black woman needs. Hello. Um, I really hope that we see a lot more of this character. I was told um, that she was a minor character in the book, but the writers decided to flesh her out. Um, yeah, we need her. So, <laughs> I'm thankful that she's here. Everybody's just really great. Uh, Ricky Widow, aka Shadow Moon, gorgeous. His wife is played by the girl who was in... She was in some, like, gamer movie. All I know about her is that she was supposed to be the lead in those uh, Twilight movies. But because she had come up with one movie, she just couldn't have... The, she couldn't find the energy to do Twilight. And it was, like, one of her biggest regrets. But she looks a lot different. I don't know if she lost weight or what happened. But I did not recognize that was her until I saw her IMDb. And I was like, girl, what happened? She looked really, really different. I don't know if it's makeup or whatever. But she just did not look the same. Anyway, it's a great show. It's well written. The people of color cast members are lit very well. And if you have been following me, you know that I disdain shows that do not light their uh, dark, their dark skin characters well. You know what I mean? If the character has a tinge of melanin, lighting is off. It's just really, really weird. So I love when a show really takes time out to light up uh, their actors that have darker skin. Like it's a, ne it's a necessity. We're here and we deserve good lighting. Um, the show is very well directed. I love that Neil uh, Gaiman, Gaiman is a part of it, um, a part of the creative process. Um, and I and I love the diversity. It's really it's really well mixed uh, culturally. Um, it's a great representation of men and women. It's a good show, and I really think that it's what we need right now um, in 2017, and just in in entertainment as well. I feel like it's just become very very stale, and the quality has not been that great. But I am excited for this show and for what's to come. If you like American Gods, please let me know what you think about the show in the comment section below. Um, if you have any tea, a little bit of spoilers, let me have some. But don't give me too much because I don't want you to spoil it for the rest of the season. But I am looking forward to what's to come with American Gods. This is such a great, great show. Um, if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you next week for American Gods Episode 2. Bye, guys.